welcome back to Metroid 2 Return of Samus. So this is something that I kind of ran through here quickly in order to get to the save point, but kind of on what I mentioned before about not about it being kind of hard to tell what's what and where you are. This area out here is sort of an outdoor area. You see, we came out of this here, which was a cave, and this here, then, is a rather large open air... O open area. The center of which is something resembling a building. We can't really go much higher, and there was actually a sp uh, path split back if you go back into the vertical room that I w went through to get this far. Um, the There was a second path down below, but we currently do not have the capacity to get in there. So we're going to explore this way for now. Were I not in so much of a hurry to get to the save point, just a big empty room. Um, I would have liked to at least show off the bomb! Yeah! I would have liked to at least show off the reason you can't go any higher. There's also... a missile expansion! Which isn't as big a deal when we already had 30 missiles, but really that just kind of... I guess skipped the very early game, when you kind of... between that and the Morph Ball, where you kind of can't even function at the start of a Metroid game, because you don't have those barest necessities. Okay, so the only path we have now is this way. Okay, that was easy. Oh, I can just go in here, okay. And, oh boy, energy tanks! So similar to the first Metroid game, you can only have so many energy tanks. It's just looking at the UI, it's something real tiny, like five. But hey, energy tanks are energy tanks, and I am not gonna complain. Haha! Okay, so we have a path going that way that I will get back to momentarily. Start by going down this way through another shockingly large empty room. And another item, heck yeah! Real early to get the ice beam. Nothing else in this room, though. Okay, you can't freeze these, they just heck and die. It's always kind of interesting to see how each one of the different Metroid games handles the ice beam. Because we saw in the first Metroid game... Really? We saw in the first Metroid game, the first hit actually froze the enemy. More missiles. The first hit actually froze the enemy, but did not do damage. The second hit did damage in unfreezing them. So that's up there. Can I get up there? Hold up. You can bomb jump in this game, by the way. It's just kind of... Hey! That works, too. I feel like the timing on the bombs is just kind of long. Wait a minute. Aha! The timing on the bombs is just a little bit long, which makes it hard for my monkey brain to 
wrap itself around the timing. Well, I want that, but I do not believe I can get it. Well, we'll have to come back to that, I guess. Um, how many... Okay, you can only have three bombs out at a time? Large range on that. So you can do a double bomb jump pretty easily. If you... But I think the delay is too long for you to infinitely bomb jump. Hard to say. Before you know it, it's not going to even be an issue anyway, though. Yeah. Okay, so we went that way, and we, saw, and we saw something nice. Don't know what it is, but we saw something nice. So there are Chozo statues littered around. Which makes sense, because these are Chozo ruins. Because we know from what lore has been... Oh yeah, that worked. We know from what lore has been revealed elsewhere. Nope. Guess we're not going that way. We know from what lore has been revealed elsewhere that um, the Metroids came about because of the Chosen. Oh, I froze them already. Ooh, Metroids. Oh, that was a cave. Crap. Okay, well, we're down here now. So I can go left. A lot of... Hey, it's that thing. The spider ball. The spider ball has not come back in many Metroid games. I think only Prime, now that I think about it. Can you go this way? Anything over here? No? So, you cannot get out normally. I could probably bomb jump up there. But the spider ball works. Morph, and then press down again. And then, you can climb on walls. Um, the controls on this are actually pretty good. When you're stationary, you push whichever direction you want to move. You want to move up, you press up. You want to move down, you press down. Um, however, if you're going around a corner... If you're pressing down, you will continue moving along the same edge you're moving on as long as you continue to press down. Like here, I can press right. I'm still pressing right. But if I let off and now I press right, of course it's not going to do anything because that's not a direction. I can go from down to left, and I continue going left, as one would expect. In fact, I'm... It seems like you don't even have to lay off of the button as long as you continue pressing any direction because I'm just spinning the D-pad. You continue going in whichever direction you were continuing... Uh, you were going in. Um, if you want to unmorph, just hit jump. Or if you want to get out of spider ball, hit jump. So it doesn't work super well for... split-second decisions, let's say. Okay, so the ice beam works. First shot freezes. And then you can continue shooting them to kill them. That's kind of powerful. 
Well, there was no Metroid in there. But maybe we'll find a Metroid up here. Uh, Spider-Ball also moves relatively slowly. And you can bomb from Spider-Ball. I think you can re-Spider-Ball in the air? You do, you can, but you fall, like, immediately. That's something that you can do, but it seems to be kind of tricky. That's a Metroid. Got him! Down to 37 Metroids now. Nothing else in this room. Oh, but getting out of this room is a little tricky. I want to go up. Because there's probably good stuff up there. And the easiest way to do that is this. Using the spider ball like this is something that you will probably see a lot of, especially when playing casually. Just, what can I do to go around the entire room, check every wall, the entire cavernous ceiling for secrets? Um, there's something up here. Hold on. I do not know where. No! I was too close. Do, 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 do. Wow, this is really going somewhere. Where's this going? Where's this going? Is this going to take me back outside? So there's supposed to be a missile expansion up here. Instead, I think I just found a shortcut. No, there was not a missile expansion, my bad. It was, in fact, only this. Uh, there was, however, something like an enemy or something over here that'll keep knocking you off the ceiling. Aha! A missile expansion, really? Yeah, missile expansion, okay. Um... Oh, no, it's not an expansion, it's just a refill. Man, that's cheap. There's also an energy refill up here, uh, further to the left, I'm not gonna bother with. That's actually everything, there's nothing else up here. So we can just fall down. I, this is the big cavern surrounding the building, for lack of a better word. Temple or something. There are a couple missile expansions in here. Okay. Both relatively easy to get. Didn't have to do anything fancy. And this is actually the very tall room 
that I deemed unable to climb before, so we've worked our way around to that. On the other side of this room... Music in this game always got me at that one very specific part, because it's like... That's like fight music. Is there a boss coming on? What's going on? Does this reform, I wonder? So if you want to, you can do this and actually get on top of the building, but there isn't anything up there. At this point, I think we've actually gotten everything that there is to get. And this here will just drop us off the ledge down to where we exited the building on the right-hand side last time, which is down there where we got the spider ball, where we fought the Metroid, all of that. That's just all down there. Samus has some skinny legs in this game. I wonder if that'll change when we get a different suit. So this is not the front of the building, this is just a small ledge that then leads down to here, which is the front of the building. And there's our save point. So the area actually isn't that big. There's not a... Uh, there's a shockingly little amount going on here. It is the first area, though. Well, technically the second area. But because of that, we are done. Don't need to kill these guys, so I'm just gonna... mosey on past them. Actually, I could use the health. Which, honestly, that may just be a sprite relay. Oh, there, there's only so many of them in each one of these pits. That's an interesting decision. Uh, that may be a sprite-limiting thing. Otherwise, especially if the enemies come out infinitely, which these don't, but if they did, then that would mean you can create... You could potentially overload how many sprites are visible on the screen. I mean, the items will disappear of their own accord, but if you can just pile them up until then... This, by the way, is the vertical corridor that I mentioned before, that I took the upper... We came in from the left-hand side, and I took the upper path. If you go down, which I just did by, you know, falling real far... Then this leads you somewhere else. There is... I'm not sure where. I'm not sure where. I'll poke around for like one second. Oh, there we go. No, never mind. Anyway. There is somewhere in this room, not that I especially need it right now, um, a... An energy... Oh, there it is. An energy recharge. So if you want full health before you go anywhere, you can get it right there. This doesn't go all the way over... But the upper path here, which I was in before, this one will take you a bit further. And then poop you out somewhere over here.
So obviously you need the spider ball in order to take that upper path. You do minimum need the bombs in order to get in here. Otherwise, there's just this hole right here, which you can just bomb jump up to. Just single bomb. And then the hard one is this here. Which you technically need the spider ball for, however, you can get up here without the spider ball. If you just do a double bomb jump. And then this real neat sand area. These are just destructible blocks that go away with you shoot them, which of course we've seen in plenty of other places. There's nothing in here, by the way. Um, so it's just destructible blocks that get destroyed by shooting them, which we've seen in plenty of other places in this game. But just that it's, like, even kind of characterized as being the sand you shoot away, I think kind of is kind of neat. So where we are going, by the way, we've seen at least one of the Metroid cocoons, as it were, shells. There's another one. Every area, every one of the major areas in um, Metroid 2 has a Metroid breeding ground. And that would be exactly where we are. It's just a little bit offshoot from the main area that we ran around in. And typically requires you collecting all the items in the air in the main area in order to access this area. Like for example, you needed the spider ball in order to get in here. This is where you will find most of the Metroids. Hey. This is where you will find most of the Metroids that you need to defeat in order to lower the lava level so you can progress to the next area. Now, I mentioned in the NES Metroid that one of the larger inspirations that they had was of um, the Alien series, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, what have you, and H.R. Geiger's designs, which, of course, Geiger designed the Alien. And that, of course, lends itself to a degree of horror, I guess, and thrill, that you would get out, that you get out of the Metroid series. And the early games don't use that as much, because there's only so much you really can do. But you certainly saw that a lot more in some of the later games, such as Metroid Fusion with the SAX. Yeah, that one wasn't quite as nice a fight. There's very little that they could have done with that in the NES Metroid, simply due to the limitations of the system. But you will start seeing a lot more of that in Metroid 2, specifically here in the Metroid Breeding Grounds. Because Metroids are scary, yo! This is actually one of the things that I very much liked about, um, AM2R was they really treated these areas with that degree of horror-like respect. Got him. There 
There's the rumble. The rumble, of course, means that we have defeated all of the Metroids in this area. And with the, level, the lava level lowered, we can move on to the next area. It is difficult to tell when an enemy is frozen. They do make all of the enemy sprites, or en all of the pixels on the enemy, full bright. So that gives some kind of indication of, yes, it was frozen. And of course it stops moving. But that is also just a problem with being on the Game Boy, is there's only so much that they can do. And there are a few things that they did later on, which I'll speak of when we get to them. Specifically because that happened with the Game Boy. And they had to do something that they could not do with color, so they had to make other decisions in its place. Anyway, that will actually wrap us up for the first area, or Area 2, whatever. So I'm going to hustle on over to that save point. And say until next time, everyone, with the lava level lowered, we can go to the next area.